It's Friday Feedback Friday, the feedback keyest day of the week. Ha! I think I changed keys twice during that. Feedback Friday song's not been going so well lately, but it is Feedback Friday. Didn't miss it this week. Missed Thursday, but that was partially deliberate. Partially it was to give um, Gamer's Guide to Feminism a chance to have more people watch it, because I think it sort of sucked the oxygen out of everything else this week. But also it's one of those weeks where people are getting back into the routines, people are getting back to school, that sort of thing. So I didn't want to flush too much content with Gamer's Guide out because everything's been a little low lately. But we are going to talk Gamer's Guide comments mostly for obvious reasons. It's the end of the series. And um, there's been some back and forth the whole time that people haven't seen the hate that I've been getting during this series. And I normally don't show it. But I want to show you guys something that happened because what's happening is they don't have the guts to come to the comments where people can see them and people can debate them. They lurk on the internet and spread things amongst themselves. And this particular thing here, I'm going to show you, wasn't even sent, it wasn't even directed at me. Somebody showed me it was circling around. I'll switch here. Here's my screen. As you can see, it's the very end of the episode, the top, the 10 list that was a summary, and someone has red penned it. Gee, I wonder where this came from. But they cherry picked things in suggesting I made up the concept of othering. Well, no, if you watch the Simone de Beauvoir, I didn't. Um, accused me of ignorance and narcissism. Um, telling me I make artificial demands in the market that aren't financial causes. This is uh, just pretty much the echo chamber that, it's the other side of the echo chamber that we're dealing with in gaming. Like, what does this do? This is virtue signaling to a base that is unwilling to have a conversation. And this is why I don't normally show this stuff, but I look at it and it's frustrating. They clearly didn't watch the whole thing. They're clearly jumping in at the last minute. And this isn't productive. And, you know, unfortunately, we're not going to bring everyone along. And I just wish that the people who do disagree could do it in a more mature way than BS red pen out of context cherry picking. Because isn't that precisely what they complain about on the other side? And that's the issue I have. It's not that they don't agree with me. It's that they're twisting things. And the things that they couldn't actively argue on that list, they just made a, I know you are, but what am I? Or some kind of nasty insult. Um, and uh, it's, it's just, this just reads to me like someone is using me to call attention to themselves. And I usually don't have any time for that, but I just wanted people to see it because some of the comments I got in previous videos said they're not seeing the really rough stuff. So I just wanted you guys to see that. Let's get to your comments now, because the comments on this channel were a heck of a lot better. And there were some interesting questions. There were a lot of people who had a surprising reaction to my my comments on extreme trash talk. And this really surprised me because I flat out said, you know, certain amount of trash talk between friends. Okay. The whole point is you got to be able to say stop and have someone stop. That is it. That was all I was getting at. I specifically said extreme trash talk. And a lot of people interpreted that as any trash talk. And that's, I, I specifically did not say that. And it's really interesting that certain cultural elements are so sensitive that people jump to conclusions and don't actually see what's there. They don't take the whole of the statement. They get what they're afraid of. Because you know you can tell when someone's bothered but they're not saying anything. Or they say after the fact they were bothered. And then it's, why didn't you say something? And I I don't want to be a part of that. I don't want to be part of that. Games are supposed to be fun. I don't want to have to deal with hurt feelings after the fact. I have... No problem mediating. I have no problem, you know, being the bigger person. But sometimes I just got to be able to turn it off. And 
the way things currently are isn't allowing me to do that. And it's one of the few real complaints I have with gaming culture and people are, you know, like, well, find communities. Well, I have tried that and I have tried communities and then some night somebody will get drunk and shoot their mouth off and then no one's supposed to say anything. And so I just leave the group because if I'm not allowed to say something, if they're allowed to act like a little jerk and say something just wrong, just boundary violated, like I don't care how drunk you are, you shouldn't say that. And me responding to them is seen as drama. That's it. I'm gone because that's not mutual respect. That's someone else having more rights to speech than I do within a group. And that's wrong. If someone is going to dish it out, someone better be prepared to take it. The whole reason it's fun trash talk as opposed to hurtful trash talk is that everybody knows everybody is okay with it. And you can't know that everyone's okay with it unless people have the right to say when they're not okay with it. And that's all I was trying to get at. Um, another interesting thing somebody talked about was the fact that the speedrunning community is very supportive, but there are a lot more women in fighting games and something doesn't add up there. What doesn't add up there is that women don't know that speedrunning exists. <laughs> you gotta remember, guys, that even though I've been a gamer for a long time, I know what these things are there are going to be a lot of newcomers. We're looking at new players. I'm existing player base. They can't get any more money out of me. We need new players. And so the people coming in are going to be new. Speedrunning is a community thing. They're not in a store and pick up a box that says speedrunning. Now, there were a lot of really positive comments, and I, I want to get to that. I, I wish I could respond to, um, here, here's a good one, uh, about the trash talk thing. And I, I really think that uh, this person really understood. They said, I think one thing to keep in mind regarding the trash talking in the professional fighting game community is that it's pro gaming and not everyone in the fighting game community at large is necessarily looking to become pro because the stakes in professional gaming are much higher competitors obviously will use anything to get ahead including trash talk anyone who goes into a tournament tournament knows and expects this which is fine just like in professional sports for casuals on the other hand i don't think it's a good at all to idea all to encourage trash talk since quite a few people in fact probably the majority of people are just looking to have fun and pulling out the trash talk for a casual match just makes you look like a wannabe pro who's being a jerk for no reason. In other words, context is key, and I think Leanna's suggestion is mainly for casual play, which is the more common context people enjoy games in. Yes, I specifically said this is community, not industry. I said that at the end of the video. Thank you, someone, for understanding what I was saying. A few people argued me, said the financial industry health argument was weak. Guys, I'm getting that from developers. And it can't be weak since I hear y'all and I see y'all complaining about microtransactions. And microtransactions are a direct result of needing to suck more money out of gamers. Because costs are rising faster than prices. And this is something I have heard from developer after developer after developer after developer. C consumer advocate developers. This is not one or two people. This is a consistent thing that the cost of games is a real concern to the point that, you know, before these in-app purchases and microtransactions and all that stuff became something that people screamed about but used them, they were really worried about a sharp decline in the number of AAA games. They also didn't think this console generation was going to sell well. The PS4 proved them all wrong in that regard. But th this is not my opinion. This is something I've heard consistently from developers. This is me reporting, okay? So if you're telling me I'm wrong... You're telling me that the developers that are making the games are wrong. And you have to ask yourself whether you're really in a position to know that or not. 
there was also a lot of stuff and i'm not gonna single anyone out on this one oops hit the mic a lot of people had an issue with they really zeroed in on the wrong things in my saying gamers are not white men gamer is anybody who likes games don't associate the gamer identity with inherent privilege it's not and i say this in the video it's not okay to pick on white guys it's not it's not okay to pick on white straight cisgendered men and i made that pretty clear i think talking about the fact that if it's not okay to say to a woman it's not okay to say to anybody that gamers are getting their feelings hurt and feel like they're not able to say so all that stuff i thought i was really super clear that it's not, oh, if it's a white guy, it's okay to pick on him. The problem is that it's open season on gamers that fit a certain physical description now because we associate that with privilege. And I talk about the fact that there are other things that are invisible. Disabilities are one. Neuroatypicality is another. Where you cannot just assume privilege because of the way someone looks i am really sorry the whole privilege argument broke containment in academia and has slithered into pop culture because it is misapplied P privilege is a complex interweaving of things and you you cannot make an armchair diagnosis about someone's privilege based on an exchange on the internet that is just this is why we can't have nice things, okay? You you do not know. I flat out said, you can't know a stranger's suffering. And these are the points where I go, what more do I have to do? What more do I have to do to stop people from being so jumpy on this? I don't entirely understand why you're coming at me, of all people, about this. I had to really walk a fine line with this stuff and defend defend gamers and defend gamers as good people and i think i did that a lot literally the devil for the the regressives in gaming remember literally the devil i went there i laid it on the mat i defended gamers and i'm getting a little sick of not good enough there is a point in time where I have to be able to say when I think something can be improved. That is fair. I think I've earned that. I think I've earned the right to say I love gaming. I think gamers are great. There are some structural and cultural things that are no individual's fault that I think if we tweaked, it's better. That, I admit, that, that hit me. That hit me here. It hurt. It hurt. That... People are still accusing me of this. People who, I've seen your comments before, you know me, you know better than that. That was an emotional response and I do not appreciate it. We all have to be adults here. That's not cool. It's not cool for you to lay that on me and take out your bad experiences with other people on people who didn't do that to you. Everybody has gotta be accountable. I'm big on accountability. If I feel like I wasn't clear about something, I will say so. I've done it in the past, despite what some people, some commenters on Kotaku in action have said. That's just, just so you guys know what that means. Somebody has been continuing to post on Kotaku in action that I did something to offend gamers and never apologized for it. They don't state what it is. They just keep dropping this comment and I have no idea what they're talking about. If there is a misunderstanding, I'm happy to clear it up. But there was a period of about a month and a half, a year and a half ago, where I did nothing but frequently apologize. It was constant apology, apology, apology for the same thing. Going on streams, interacting with people, doing interviews, talking about things, apologizing for misunderstandings, apologizing for things that came out wrong. So to say I have never apologized, you know, you guys, you guys have heard me. You guys have heard me when I made when I made that comment about Ukraine and I used a dated for, I apologize for it. So this idea that I have never apology apologized for offense, I just it's another what more do you want? Somebody said this week that, you know, one of my strengths is when I'm 
absolutely unabashedly honest. So I'm trying that, you know, I'm, I'm, hi Momo. I'm getting a little sick of, and isn't this a gamer thing? I'm getting sick of being a punching bag. Come on, Mo. There we go. His softness is here. There he is. Um, and you, you guys are great in the comments and I don't want you to get the sense that I'm yelling at you. I'm not. I'm yelling at the, what friggin' more do I have to do to be treated like a gamer instead of some sort of outsider looking to ruin fun, looking to change gaming? The fact that I did not make a single comment about the change, the, about changing the content of video games, and I still have got gaming doesn't need to change, fuck you, is pretty much proof of what I'm saying that there is a cultural problem. And cultural problem means no individual's fault. But this reactivity, when someone's saying, look guys, if we all make small changes together, we can afford these big freaking changes that no one wants and aren't gonna work. And there's this pushback. Well, guess what's gonna happen? What I'm worried is going to happen. If we don't make these small changes now, if we're not reasonable and we don't go, all right, we have to be pragmatic here, then the big changes are going to come and nobody's going to like it and they're not going to work and we're going to be in another two-year cycle minimum of this stuff. And I don't know about you, I don't want to do that. So we either have to decide to make solutions ourselves or we're gonna get them forced on us and they're gonna be lousy solutions. They're not gonna be solutions at all. They're gonna be band-aids. They're gonna be things that kill all the fun and make everybody, you know, oh, backpats everybody, but they're not actually going to do very much. This is what happened in the 90s when they tried to strip all the violence out of video games. Because a few politicians thought they were ruining children's souls. Back to that well again. I lived through that. I don't wanna go through that again. Somebody was lecturing me in the comics about uh, comments about art not needing critics. Well, gaming's a business as well. And we need to help developers avoid not the critics, the shareholders. It's the business, the bean counters, if you will, that's really dan that's really threatening creative license in gaming. And you know, I am trying to bring you guys the truth. I am trying to have off the record conversations because people won't talk on the record. I have tried and tried and tried and tried and tried. Developers are too scared. So you guys are gonna have to trust me when I bring to you the outcome of those conversations because it's all we got right now. They are not allowed to talk. They don't want to throw their careers down the toilet, and they shouldn't. This is the last final point I make because this will sort of dovetail in. There were some people who just went, oh, 70 to 80% of household purchasing are done by women. Oh, so much for patriarchy. How is there patriarchy? And other people asked me to elaborate on that. Now, to the people who asked me to elaborate on that, happy to, happy to, to the people that just made a snide comment about patriarchy, the reason 70 to 80% of household uh, purchases are made by women because of the housewife generation and those norms within households based on that. I mean, when you talk about household purchases, you're talking about what dish soap people use, what floor cleaner people use, what furniture polish people use. And a lot of the times those traditional buying patterns are passed down, you know, from the people who, who do the housework and women still do the lion's share of the housework. And this is important with games because of branded products within games, the same way they do it in movies. I think more and more, there's going to be branded products within video games. And I mean, programming for women is full of those because women make household purchasing decisions. This is another source of revenue for games that we're not properly exploiting because of this artificial connection between gaming and men. And like I said, 
A thing being a guy thing is not an inherently bad thing. There are just business realities. If you guys want your 4K graphics and your 60 frames per second and all this stuff, the money is going to have to come from somewhere. And this is the crunch we're facing. And I'm frustrated not because people have a different opinion from me. I'm frustrated because people are rejecting facts. And yeah, yeah, my frustration is showing. So please forgive that. Please, please take this for what it is. I am a human being. Um, and, you know, let me know your thoughts. Um, patrons, there will, I am going to put something up next week about a special town hall for you guys. Like I said in the video, um, there will be a specific content for patron, Patreon patrons. Because uh, really, you're the guys that are funding this, so your opinion matters the most. And so we will, we will probably continue this conversation in a bigger way among you know, the backers, the people who are actually, who care about this enough to put money down and help support the, the continuation of this. Because that is, that is really a huge thing at this point. It hasn't broken even yet. And so this is, uh, this is something we will continue in that forum. Okay, thanks guys and have a good weekend.